What can you tell us about uh, Trump's desire to withdraw U.S. troops from Syria and how that was subverted or ignored? Well, first of all, <clears throat> you know, he, he obviously appointed people at, at the top of the Defense Department that were effectively his enemies, the most prominent of which was General Mattis. And <clears throat> many in, in his inner circle told him when he had been elected before he made any announcements about Mattis, he said, sir, let us let us thoroughly bet him. We, you really don't know him. Please, let's not do this. And of course, uh, Donald Trump was enamored with, you know, the image, the idea of a four star Marine who could go in there and get things done. You know, he ended up with a four star Marine, but the only things he did were designed to protect and enlarge the Marine Corps and obstruct anything that Donald Trump wanted to do inside the military. So he didn't take that advice. And when it became clear that he was dealing with someone who was utterly opposed to him, he should have fired the man outright. But he was always talked out of it by key members of his own administration and people on the Hill. Oh, no, don't do that. That'll cause a lot of trouble. You'll you'll be annihilated in the press. You'll have more enemies than ever. And, and he relented. This is what happened too often. So when he sent me over, the first mission was to try and get us out of Iraq, out of Afghanistan as quickly as possible. And the second was to get us out of Iraq and Syria. And I pointed out uh, to his staff, well, getting out of Iraq and Syria is fairly straightforward. It's not that difficult because you can literally drive out. Uh, Afghanistan's a, a larger challenge, but it can still be done. And of course, the winter time was the ideal time to do it because the people that give you the most trouble are sitting in the mountains next to their stoves or in their caves next to the fire, they're not down there fighting with you. So we should have gotten out in the winter and we could have driven or flown most of the equipment out, I think. And at the same time, avoided the kind of the debacle that you saw later on in the year in the, in the out in the beginning of the summer or during the summer. But again, once he was, once it became clear what he wanted to do and he, the original end date that I gave him for getting out of, Afghanistan was 31 December. He advanced that, I think, till 15 January. It doesn't make any difference. It's fine. Uh, we still could have gotten out within that time frame safely, all the Americans and most of the equipment. The problem, <clears throat> the problem was that when he confronted Mitch McConnell and uh, Mr. O'Brien as his national security advisor, uh, you know, even his acting secretary of defense, uh, certainly Esper beforehand, members of the Senate be beyond Mitchell that were on both sides, they all said, oh, no, you can't do this. No, we, we have a bipartisan agreement in place. Uh, we've worked with the Taliban. No, 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 no. This has to wait. We can't do this. And again, instead of demanding it, acting on it, he buckled under pressure and relented and said, well, let's take 50 percent out. And back to Syria, just a few more questions on that. As we are speaking, there was just recently a, another rocket attack on the U.S. military base in Deir Azor. The official rationale for why the U.S. is in Syria is that we're there to fight ISIS, to prevent its resurgence, and to train the Kurds. In your opinion, does that uh, pretext hold up? Is that the real reason why the U.S. is there? I think the principal reason we are still on the ground in Iraq in Syria, the, the two principal reasons are as follows. First of all, the lobby in Washington wants to keep us there. Uh, some of this goes back to Israel and its supporters, uh, and the thinking being that if we are there, somehow or another Israeli security benefits. Uh, I'm not sure that's really the case. I think most of what we've done in the Middle East has made life miserable for Israel by increasing the numbers of uh, individuals that hate the country and are willing to attack it. Uh, so I'm not sure that's true, but I think a lot of people see it in those terms. Uh, perhaps more important is the unwillingness of the administration to withdraw and then face the kind of debacle that they saw in Afghanistan, even though you could probably get out of both Syria and Iraq easier, faster, with l less trouble in the middle of the night, provided you didn't tell anybody you were leaving and you, you came out quickly uh, with some sort of armed escort. But I don't think they want to go through that. I don't think anybody wants to be accused of uh, leading from behind, which is nonsense, or uh, courting defeat, or being a, a defeatist administration, so forth. This is sort of nonsense that 
people worry about politically. Uh, the truth is that if you left tomorrow morning, most Americans would breathe a sigh of relief and, and most Americans would then completely lose interest because most Americans on any given day, Aaron, are not interested in what happens beyond our borders. And finally, about Syria, um, there is a uh, now well-known uh, email from Jake Sullivan, who's the current National Security Advisor to uh, then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton from February 12th, 2012. So nearly 10 years ago, 10 years ago next month. And there's a line where Sullivan says at the top, Al-Qaeda is on our side in Syria. And this was a private email, but it was publicly expressing, I think, uh, a basic fact, which is that when the U.S. chose to wage this multi-billion dollar dirty war in Syria to overthrow Assad, it was choosing to align with Al-Qaeda and U.S. weapons ended up going to Al-Qaeda and Al-Qaeda tied groups. I'm wondering, in your experience, in the circles you're in in Washington, was there any debate about the fact that the U.S. was choosing to side with the group that attacked the U.S. on 9-11? And, and how much does the failure of that policy, do you think, still drive U.S. policy today in sort of seeking to deny Syria and its allies a full victory inside Syria's borders? We've taken some very strident positions that were from the first irrelevant, or not irrelevant, but irrational. One of those was that uh, Assad had to go under all circumstances. He was illegitimate, unacceptable. At the same time, the Russians looked at Assad, and he was, of course, a former ally, but they also looked at the plight of the non-Sunni Muslims, the Shiites. They looked at the Druze. They looked at the various Christians, Armenians, and others who were in the country. They said, well, if the Sunnis take over this, this radical Islamist Sunni brand of Islam, then all of these people are going to be slaughtered, and we're not prepared to sit by and watch these people be slaughtered. We said, nonsense, uh, Assad has to go. And it didn't make any difference what Assad said or did, he had to go. And ultimately, he wasn't going to leave because he also had Iranian backing, and this also offended people. In truth, if you had to choose in that region uh, which side you wanted to be on, you were much better off on the Shiite side because the Shiites were not murdering Christians. They were not murdering minorities. They were actually liberating Christians from Sunni oppression and others. And uh, these uh, popular mobilization front militias that were trained by the Iranians have actually worked very closely with us to destroy ISIS in the past, which made a lot of sense. But you know, you have these irrational actors uh, who refuse to accept any any new policy, any new change, and they turned out to be more powerful than the president of the United States. And so we're still stuck with this ridiculous position in Syria. Uh, how do you get out of it? Well, you have to have a strong president who comes in and fires people, removes them from power, and then holds people accountability for their disobedience for their active subversion of national policy. That should have happened under President Trump, but President Trump was not even aware of it until late in his administration.